What's up YouTube, I'm introduced and today I want to introduce you to editing like Joe Woe door transitions. I will show you everything possible that you need to know what you need to do when it comes to door transitions so that you can do them yourself. I'll show you what masking is and how it works and why it's necessary for the door transition and then also a few examples and my favorite clip it's about like three different kind of door transitions that you can do either from one door to another to cut down the time or change the location then running through the door and just appearing within the building at a random spot to cut down the time if you chase enemies etc and Ready? you can also just teleport yourself yeah, yeah. out into the open you think it might not work but just Alone. opening the door and turning or running just sells the illusion and it works very well so yeah i will show you now running through a door and being out in the open and how that edit works with one of Joe Woe's clips. What's up future interviews coming in here because during the edit I saw some things didn't line up because of my face cam. Sucks, I have to redo it again. But here we are. I prepared something for you to explain exactly how masking works and what it is, all right? I, I have got some uh, orange and uh, purpley uh, clip here. You see, you always see the top one so that you just see the orange one. If I disable it, you see the purple underneath. And this is really important to understand that they are kind of layers. And now we need to go into the color page to dive into it a little bit more. All right, here we have the color page. And you could be like, holy smokes, what does that look like? What is it? I will go over all of that right now. Um, I will show you an edit page what it can look like. And that's why it's really important to understand to, to select the correct clip. All right, this is what it can look like. Even worse than the one that we just looked at. And yeah, let's get back to this where we have the purple underneath and the orange right here. It's not always as obvious what clip you look at because they don't have this kind of color. If you look at the timeline that I just showed you, all of these little snippets almost looked exactly the same. So you need to make sure that you select the right one that you want to be masking, okay? It is super important. But let's just quickly go over what is what. Up here, you've got all the different things that you can select. There you have the timeline. The timeline is this where you can actually see all the clips, how you edited them lined up in the timeline pretty much. And that's where you also select the clip that you want to edit. It's a little bit easier there than on the clips because I just told you clips are not as easy to see and that is what the clips are though. So if you wanna select it from there or everyone has a different name, then you can do it there if you wish to. And this is the nodes tab. The nodes tab is really important for the masking because we need to go right click on it and then add an alpha output. Once we add the alpha output and connect these two, then the masking will have worked but first we need to mask. So this is where we mask. We need to go down here to the window tab. This is this little icon here, and then you can select whatever you wanna use, um, square, circle, line, but I usually use the pen tool because then we can go in here and just mask things out. This is what we will use for the door transition because it needs to be movable and that's the only thing how we can do it with the pen tool. And you may have spotted already on the right hand side, it started to be masked out and it also has a back background. If we undo that, then yeah, as you can see, it didn't mask anymore. And the clip down here as well shows orange completely. So you need to have the alpha output there and then you grab it, connect it, and that's when the mask happens. If we go back to the edit page, now you can see that we masked out the orange. If we go back to the color, you can see, <clears throat> if we go back to the color tab, you see down the bottom here, there's like this little square with a circle in it, and the circle is grayed out and the background is black. If we click on it, it inverts it. Now you see that in the middle is black, and the outside is kind of white grayy, and that's exactly what happened here as well. So you need to see uh, how things work because we will use that later uh, when I show you guys what needs to be done. It's always easier to think of it as layers and how they work together. And I think this may explain better once you actually use it within the video. All right, let's dive right into Joe Woe's video finally. All right, now we've got Joe Woe's clip. This is the door transition that we want to create and I will show you exactly how it works, okay? So this is a gameplay of Joe Woe where he plays with Symphony and Mutex. Um, it's a while back, but the transition is still the same how I would do it. And he starts off looting here in the police station and runs through the door 
that is where we want to do the transition and then he continues runs to the buy station buys things blah 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 and then he gets to this green bit and as you know that is where we want to get to right and yeah let's go over the process and what we need to pay attention to next let's go back here i'm going to undo the muting part and now i got to pause to watch it all right we know that we want to go through the door here and now we need to find the best spot more like the last spot where the doors are still visible here's a door on the right hand side is no door anymore and now the door is gone and we want to have the last frame where the door is gone we can go like two forward let's go here and we're just going to make a tiny little cut then we also go back and find the frame where the door is open not the one before because we want to start masking and when the mask starts it usually is something that you want to mask out when the door is still closed there's nothing that you want to not mask out does it make sense so here it's open we want to mask this out here it's closed if we mask something then it's wrong so the door opens here therefore we do the cut here now we have found the spot that we want to mask out later so what we, what i will do here is hold down shift and move this up because if i hold down shift I can move left and right and nothing will happen, but if I move it up, if I move it up, um, it stays in its spot. So let go. It's perfectly fine here. And now we want to find the spot where, where he runs away and is in the grass. There's a few things that you need to watch or have in mind when you look for these things. Not straight away, but at the moment you want to listen to the audio, what they talk about and then usually watch ahead as well to see what else is coming up. Is there a gunfight? What information afterwards do we need? Do we need to see how they approach things, etc.? So this is something to keep in mind. Um, here, it's something about uh, drop some money, uh, I want to buy something, and then they do it, and then he gets picked up in the car, and I do a mini map transition afterwards that I will do a tutorial about in the future videos. But right now, let's focus on this bit again. And the next thing that needs to be paid attention to is how he holds his gun because we want to match the gun movement afterwards. But so far, you just need to find a rough spot where it could work, that we can work with. So maybe somewhere here, we do a cut. And let's delete this shift, backspace. And then we grab this bit and just move it underneath. And now we have the orange and pink scenario that I talked about before. Now we go in a little closer and have a closer look. We want to mask out the top clip. This one here. Don't have this. This one here. Because when he runs through it, we technically want to be in the grass. So we need to get into the color. Open the color tab. Again, we want to make sure that we're on this. We want to select this tool. And we want to make sure that we are on the clip on top. Remember what I said, that it can be confusing. If you just look at these things, they do look fairly similar. So maybe you can get it confused sometimes. But we want to be on the top clip because we mask the top. And yeah, just be at the very beginning of the top clip. The door is opened, etc. Um, and yeah, grab this tool. We can also make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to uh, mask out. And if you hold down your mouse wheel, you can also move it around, etc. So let's just do that quickly. One thing you need to keep in mind is you need to ha hit this and that. The What's up, everyone? Yes, it's Future Introduce again. Messed up one more time. And it's about the keyframes. The keyframes were hidden behind my face cam, so I just turn it off quickly so that you guys see. Um, I'm just going to bring that out here so it stands in the middle, and then I can turn that back on. And it's super important to hit the keyframe symbol this is these two here you hit them they need to be red that means that they are on so then whatever change you do gets tracked as you can see here now a keyframe got added if i go to the next frame and put one aside and one up here and one there and one here and i'll go back to the first frame as you can see here the little thing moves and up here it moves as well you see that it has been tracked if i continue now like this it stays the same because we didn't do anything there yet. So we go one frame further and adjust that too and adjust this. And then you see again, it has been tracked. So you need to tick this. If you don't tick that, your changes are not going to be tracked. So if I delete these and turn this off, 
go back to the beginning, all right, this one we have, then I move this aside and that aside, and like, yeah, I'm tracking, it's awesome. And then I go back, you see this got reverted too because we did not track. So keep this in there, we need to have this on, and then you're doing great. I've done it more often than not to not do it, and I please uh, you ask you, please do it, all right? You know what I mean. Okay, let's continue with past introduce. Okay, so now let's go and close, mask this out quickly, and so that we can, you know, continue. One thing that you need to know, sometimes this happens so fast, like now you look at it frame by frame, but it is going to be so fast in game that uh, don't worry about it if sometimes you crop out a little bit, okay? Because sometimes there's these edges because of the V-sync or something, uh, but you don't even notice that in game. So if you don't notice that in game, you're not going to notice that the masking is mediocre-ish. Try to do the best you can, but if you can't, it's totally fine. Go here, something like that. Next frame, mask here, go here. It's all also trying, you know, like you want to try and then if it's perfect, you use it. If not, you know, you can change things afterwards too. Again here, minor adjustment like this, go in like that. And that is what I meant. You know, now the door is gone. And it's actually just super, super quick. All right. Let's go back and see. Do we track it well? Door opens. One, two, three, four. Boom. Now <clears throat> we need to go close this up again and add the alpha output. Like I said, you know, add the alpha output. Boof. And now... I just need to need to check whether or not it is actually the right thing that got masked. And it is not, because we need to invert it, because right now the middle is what is shown, and we need to invert it. But because I didn't have it this way before, we now need to invert every single frame. So invert, go to the next frame, invert, because this is what the keyframe does. So for next time, when you do it, do it better than me, already have it inverted, and then start tracking. Otherwise, it can also be a bit of a pain, but in this one, it's just a few clicks, so it's, it's, it's fine. Now you can already see the masking, how it will look. Running through there. Now we come to the next step, and that is to see that the gun matches up. So if the gun matches up, then we can go to the sound design. Let's hop right into the gun uh, matching up scenario. You see he starts sprinting, the gun in the first clip comes up, the gun here is already up. So maybe there's a little bit of better clip or better position that we can use. So hit the T tool, go in here and just see if we can get a little bit of a better... Maybe where the gun just comes up, maybe here. So press A, select these. Magnet, magnet selected so that we're sure that it's at the right spot and oh, I think that is awesome. So what we're going to do next is do the sound design. Let's just play it and listen to it whether or not it sounds a little bit odd. Mm, get a loader. Mm, it, it's not good. It doesn't sound good. So what we will have to do is do a little bit of sound design, okay? One of the most important things for the sound design with door transitions, most important thing is to extend a little bit of the sound of the door opening because right now it's chip and it stops there. We need to have this like swing. There's like some certain kind of echo in it that really sells it. So we need to extend a little bit of the sound from the door transition or from the door clip and then see where another audio kind of part is more important. Sometimes people still talk while someone runs through a door so you try to extend that clip or it is the clip that is following like here where they start talking about what they want to buy. So in this instance, like I said, we go in here, just press Alt and click on the bottom. Now just the bottom one is selected and we can extend it a little bit. Do you hear what I mean? It's like, you, you, you. Let's disable this. 
This is this is the sound that would have been missing. And this is what we need. Now enable this clip again. And here we need to do the same thing roughly. We need to select Alt and go down here and actually then press Shift and move it underneath all of them because if we left it here and moved it to the left, it would take away the sound from the clip coming before. That's why we move it down low here. And now we can also se select this. Again, Alt, select just this and drag it out a little bit. Just try to find a spot where it could work. Maybe here. Here, Mutex starts saying, give me your money, I can. So what we will do is just grab this, put it here, fade it in a little bit, and let's listen. I can get a load of sentence. What you can also do here is like maybe fade it a little. Yeah. It's just because this this smashing was a little bit loud to me to not understand what Mutex was talking about. And then you have the information that came from before because uh, here he's just collecting money and doing his own business. And then it's like as if someone in the comms starts talking and therefore this transition is being sold even better because the conversation afterwards just continues and it's just seamless. Like it's, I don't know, just perfect. Give me your money, I can, I can get uh, I'm you know, the conversation continues, he's like, the money is here, and then the rest happens, you know. This is uh, how the transition is being made. Before we end this video, I will show you my favorite door transition that I've ever created at the very end. So make sure to stick around until then. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these kind of videos and if they help you, just please leave a like. Maybe subscribe. Do subscribe. Also comment down below what you want to see next because this was a suggestion from Pew 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 Pew. I think it was Palm Palm. I know it was. And again, thank you so much for coming by. I love you guys so much. Thanks so much. It's Ian, Joe Woe, and Bretman for letting me use the clips, letting me edit their stuff. Uh, you guys are awesome. Make sure to check them out down below as well. And if you want to see any of these kind of tutorial edits or edits in general live, come by my Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash introduce. And every YouTube Tuesday, we are going to do live edits of these tutorials. So if you want to see how they are done, make sure uh, to come by. And this coming Friday, we will have the health overlay tutorial. I actually did that tutorial live as well, so you could have seen it. But this will be live coming Friday, the health bar kind of angel walk style. So if you want to know how that works, come by next Friday. All done in DaVinci Resolve. No plugin needed. Just some uh, work. All right. I love you guys so much for coming by, and I hope I will see you next time. All right? Bye. Oh, the clip. <laughs> Stupid me. It's an edit I did for It's Iron. He is in downtown and there's a cluster strike. He runs through the door and while he turns, um, he looks at the door that he just ran through and the cluster is gone. And I'll break it down a little bit so when we go frame by frame, you see that it doesn't line up perfectly but still sells it very well because when he actually runs, it is way faster than when you edit it. So even when it looks a little bit choppy, when you do all the minor adjustments, it will look very good when played quickly. And it's one of my favorite transitions so far because I didn't think it would look good when I edited it because I had to animate the door kind of oddly, but it worked out very well. So use these techniques that I showed you and just try them with things you may think look cool and it will work out very well, all right? See you next time.